What's going on, everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now. And based on popular demand, we're bringing to you the cheapest, most affordable places to live in Arizona in a day and age where inflation is reaching record numbers. And there appears to be no end in sight as the inflation and the interest rates keep rising. People are frustrated and they really want to know where they can get the most bang for their buck. And that's what we're going to show you. Let's begin. And in this list of 12 places, we're going to show you Southern Arizona. We're going to show you around the cheap places in Phoenix and many more. Now let's get into it. First up, here we are in Southern Arizona in Yuma with a population of just under 100,000 people. The average one bedroom apartment rents for around $870 per month. If you're talking about the average median home price, you're looking at around 284000 Now, I will say this, rent prices in Yuma have been down about 4% since the year before, but the average home value price is up about 1% from the year over. So it's more economically feasible and practical to rent here right now because the market has been going down and cooling off, whereas if you're trying to buy, the market is up. Yuma is known as one of the sunniest places on earth with well over 300 days of sunshine per year. It's also known as the winter vegetable capital of the world, producing almost 91% of the leafy greens that you eat across the United States in the winter. And the reason it's so fertile here is because of the Colorado River Delta, which is essentially right here where Several rivers come together, including the Colorado River, the Gila River, and several other tributaries that have poured into those rivers along the way. And with all of that sunshine it gets, tons of photosynthesis going on here for chlorophyll. Leafy green vegetables in the winter months. And now what we're going to do is follow the Gila River inland towards Phoenix area. This here is Goodyear. It's actually where the... Salt River in the Gila River along with the Agua Fria collide, making it another fertile farm area. This here is Goodyear, named after the Goodyear Tires. With a population of around 102,000, Goodyear is one of the cheapest suburbs around Phoenix. The average home value in Goodyear is around $475,000. The good news is it's down 7.5% over the past year. So. Home prices seem to be coming down in Goodyear. Now the average rental price, depending on the size of the unit, but we'll just go with an average two bedroom, that's around 1,625. Obviously you can get some cheaper units if you go with the smaller one bedroom for around 1,100 a month. Goodyear is considered a relatively safe place with family communities all around, many different parks. That's a good thing, right? Also, it's easily accessible to Phoenix, so you can find jobs here if you live in Goodyear, easily getting around the Phoenix metro area connected to the I-10, which connects to the Loop 101 or even the 303. Goodyear, along with the rest of West Phoenix, is projected to have some steady growth, so you should consider this an investment area. It's about a 45-minute drive away from downtown Phoenix or even the airport. Next up, we're headed to Southeast Phoenix, a bit further south than the Phoenix metro area. This here is Coolidge, known for its factories that it's been building recently, like Nikola Motors, as well as Lucid Motor Electric Car Company. But it's still relatively small with a population of just around 15,000 people. Also, the average median home price is around $286,000 down over 8.3% from the last year. So prices are coming down, as you can see, in places like Coolidge, Goodyear, Yuma, it appears to be cooling off. Making for an interesting place for you to possibly invest. By the way, if you guys want us to make a video based on projections of best investment areas across Arizona, let us know in the comments and we can try and put together a list of the best places, in our opinion, for you to invest in real estate or housing in Arizona. And as you're noticing, a lot of these suburbs are definitely on the outskirts, but the city of Phoenix is growing and connecting all of these towns as the urban sprawl continues, which for some people might not be a great thing, but it's just the nature of the growth in Phoenix. 
Developers love paving the desert and creating trek home communities, especially in areas where there's factories or technology centers. Now we're headed west a bit to the town next door to Coolidge. This here is Casa Grande. In fact, the big Pueblo known as Casa Grande, the big house, the big adobe structure is actually in Coolidge. That just goes to show you the proximity. Now, Casa Grande's population is around 58,000 people with an average median home price of around $326,000, but it's down 9.8% over the years. Now, here's something to keep in mind. Casa Grande keeps coming up for some really interesting projects, including massive theme parks, amusement parks, because of the corridor of the I-8, which connects to the I-10 right here. So there is possibility for some massive growth in Casa Grande within the next 20 years, making this also an interesting investment opportunity. Unlike Coolidge, I would say there is more rental options here and mobile home parks are very popular with retirees right here. 55 and older in Casa Grande is popular. And speaking of 55 and older, we did make a full video talking about the best places in Arizona for retirees. And Casa Grande was one of those places on the list. If you guys are interested in that video, you can check the links below in the comments. I will put the link to that video so you can watch that next. And one of the benefits to being in Casa Grande is you're almost halfway to Tucson from Phoenix. So it's really like a halfway city. But the drive to Phoenix is around 45 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic on the I-10. And the drive to Tucson from here is around an hour and 10 minutes, but you could get there in an hour depending on traffic again because there's lots of semis on that road there with the I-10. Casa Grande does have quite a bit of farmland around here, but not too much economy can be banked on here. So don't expect much in the way of jobs. There used to be a big outlet mall out here, but it's really fizzled off. So Casa Grande, really a place for retirees, if anything, or locals. Now we're headed up to northeastern Arizona. This here is Kingman with a population of around 35,000 people. The average median home price in Kingman is around 265,000. So you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck here, including some cheap property if that was something you're interested in. In fact, Kingman has become popular with people who like to live out of their mobile homes and travel around the United States. Some of them have even decided to base camp in Kingman, buy their home, have a base camp here and then in the winter or the summer they will travel around in their mobile home and then come back to Kingman just because it's so affordable and they get a lot of value in the home here. Kingman is considered the heart of the Route 66 with a lot of classic car events and some neon signs. You've probably seen some of these pictures from these old Route 66 stops in magazines. That's all here in Kingman. It's very close to Bullhead City, but also it's in between Phoenix and Las Vegas. Well, it's actually closer to Las Vegas, but you go through this when you drive there. And so Kingman's popular, known for being a pit stop of sorts where you get your gas or maybe even consider staying at one of the motels. But that's really its claim to fame aside from now being one of the cheaper places in Arizona to live. Now, when it comes to the pros and cons of being in a place like Kingman, I would say some of the pros are you're going to have wide open spaces, lots of wilderness, cheap land available. Some of the downsides are going to be the lack of things to do. Aside from hiking up in the Hualapai Mountains or going out to the Colorado River, mostly a very slow paced lifestyle can be had here. I think the big thing to do in town is probably go to the Walmart or one of the department stores. But aside from that, don't expect too much vibrance. Maybe not the best place for young people, but again, a good place for retirees who like to base camp and travel around the country in their motorhome. Kingman does have quite a few rental options and you're gonna be looking at around 1,200 all the way up to $2,000 per month. You just gotta find the sweet spot. Now we're actually gonna head out towards the Colorado River. This here is Bullhead City with a population of around 43,000 people. The average median home price out here is around $305,000, and it's down about 4% over the past year. So what are we seeing a trend of? 
prices are coming down the bubble appears to be releasing some of that fluff right that inflation we actually recently went up to kingman and bullhead city and made videos about both of those places i will put links to those which are going to be more detailed reviews of both bullhead city and kingman than what i'm giving you now but the most important thing that you need to know about this area it's northwestern arizona it's mojave county it's considered a very sparsely populated place and there's potential for investment up here in northwestern arizona it does get hot in the summer and cold in the winter the benefit of bullhead city is it's along the colorado river and that's quite nice crime rates are a bit higher here in bullhead city though but if you go across the river you'll be in laughlin where they've got lots of casino gaming going on now in the summertime bullhead city is actually very hot one of the hottest places in the country i mean it's not very far away from death valley so you can expect higher temperatures here along the Colorado River than you would inland Arizona. But yeah, cooling off in that Colorado River really makes it worthwhile. Although that sweltering heat can reach around 120 degrees. And I would say the pros to being out here, you're going to have wide open spaces, beautiful scenery, lots of sunshine. The cons would be not a lot of economic opportunities out here and the crime being high because because not a lot of entertainment activities available here. I mean, you can only hike the same mountains or go out on the river so many times before you get bored. I mean, you could go to the casino, but that gets boring also. So those are some limitations you have. Now we're headed back down to Phoenix. This here is Glendale. Now Glendale is actually the most centrally located city on this list here in Phoenix Metro. The population is around 242,000 people, making it the second largest city on this list. Now, Glendale does have a $405,000 median home price, but prices are down 4.4% over the past year. Now, some of the benefits to being out here in Glendale is you're going to have lots of entertainment options, including the Arizona Cardinals who play out here. So that's a big event that takes place on Sundays in the winter. You also have Westgate, which is full of casinos and hotels and restaurants, bars, pubs. So lots of action going on out there. And then you have the Gila River Arena, which is where they do concerts. The Coyotes used to play there. But Glendale has some cons, right? And that's going to be higher than normal crime rates across the Phoenix metro area. It's not completely dangerous, but it's higher crime than you'll find in other places. Unlike other places on the list, this is going to have the highest amount of economic opportunities around jobs. And now here we are at the largest city on the list. This here is the second largest city in Arizona. It's Tucson with a population of 544,000 people. The average median home price out here is around $324,000. So you can see it's much cheaper in Tucson than around Phoenix Metro. It's down around 1% over the past year. Known as the Old Pueblo, this is home to the University of Arizona Wildcats. Now some of the pros to being out here, in my opinion, are gonna be beautiful desert, especially around Mount Lemmon and Saguaro National Park. So you're gonna have beautiful scenery all around Tucson, also at the base of the Catalina Foothills. Nice area, although a bit more expensive. And then the cons are going to be a little bit higher crime, less entertainment, no real freeways around here. But another pro I'd like to mention, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site for gastronomy, food. So good food out here, at least if you like Southwestern cuisine. The weather is a bit cooler than Phoenix by around five to six degrees in the summertime because it's higher elevation. Some of the popular activities out here are going to be golfing and hiking. Now we're going to head down to southwestern Arizona again. This here is San Luis, which is right there on the border with Mexico, just south of Yuma. Now the population out here is going to be around 40,000 people with the average median home price in San Luis being 237,000. So it's super cheap down here right along the border. It is a farming community. And there is a bit of a misconception about being close to the border. Although yes, you may get some migrants crossing through your community. 
Typically, the border towns on the American side are not very dangerous compared to the other side of the border or even some of the larger cities in America because most of the migrants are just passing through very quickly. With that being said, you can expect the border patrol jobs or any sort of job supporting the border patrol to be the largest economic factor here alongside agriculture. Now along with Yuma, this is going to be one of the sunniest places on earth, of course, because it's right down the road from Yuma. But something I'd like to say about border towns or being in Southern Arizona, San Luis is just one of many different border towns, such as Nogales. You also have places like Sierra Vista, and then you have other places along the southeastern side of the state where you're gonna find relatively cheap towns. So check out Southern Arizona. I think it's an underrated investment opportunity. It's up and coming, I would say. San Luis is also one of those places that's popular with retirees and people who are snowbirds just looking to escape that cold Canadian winter or that North or South Dakota winter and head down here to the sunniest place on earth. That's why it's popular down here because it's cheap and people like to squat in their mobile homes just off the highway, out in the desert. Uh, Obviously, that might not be the most legal thing you can do, so you'd want to verify that. But Now here we are on the far western edge of Phoenix. This here is Buckeye, right next to Goodyear, with a population of 101,000 people. Average median home price in Buckeye is around $402,000, but you can find much cheaper than that. The reason that price is so high is because of Verado, which drives up the prices. But if you go away from Verado, you can find much cheaper homes. Same could be said about Goodyear. The prices are being driven up because of Estrella Mountain Ranch. Whereas if you go out into some of the smaller communities or neighborhoods around those areas, prices are going to be much cheaper. Now, the cool thing about Buckeye here, it's at the base of the White Tanks, also where the confluence of the Salt River and Gila River and Agua Fria comes together, a very fertile place, good for farming and ag. But also, there was a lot of plans to build a smart city out here along the Tonopah area, which is right next to this area of Buckeye. So it's on the radar for some big master plan developments, which could be a good investment. Some of the pros and cons of being out here in Buckeye, number one, the best part is going to be the affordability and cheap prices, also the good weather, especially in the winter time. But the downside is in the summertime, it gets really hot out here and quite dusty. Also, it's far away from Phoenix. It's not part of the area where you're going to have the most cosmopolitan lifestyle. So if you want to be in the Phoenix metro area, you're still going to be quite far over an hour away from downtown and sometimes depending on traffic. Now, in a good traffic day, you could probably get to downtown in around 40 minutes, but traffic tends to get clogged around the I-10 because it's a main shipping route that connects California and Florida going right through Phoenix. So next up, we're headed to Globe. Now Globe's going to have a population of just under 10,000 people. And if you include Globe Miami, you're looking at around 15,000 people. Now the average median home price out here is around $218,000. That's down 3.6%. This is definitely one of the most affordable places. We did just make a video about Globe where we highlighted some of the cool attractions up there. But we talked about how this could be one of the next Arizona hotspots. So consider moving out to Globe. It's got a high desert, beautiful chaparral, Sonoran desert setting. It's close to some of the most beautiful wilderness you'll find close to Aravaipa, also close to Young, Arizona, that road that goes up above Roosevelt. So definitely check out Globe. Some of the pros and cons of being out here, number one, I would say the economics or the economy is a bit slow. If you're into mining, you're gonna make a lot of money if you work at the mines or support the mines in any way, whether it be accounting or driving some big equipment into the mines because Freeport McMoran's mines are here. Now, the pros are going to be, in my opinion, a mild summer. It's not going to be as hot as it is in Phoenix. Also, very affordable, but very old infrastructure. 
I would probably recommend retirees check this area out or people who are looking to get out of the hustle and bustle of the big city. I'm not going to necessarily recommend a family of four just move up to Globe without any real plan unless they're really trying to get out of the city. This might not be the best place for someone like that, but for retirees, this could be a great place for you or again, someone just looking to chill out. If I lived out this way, I'd probably spend a lot of time out at Roosevelt Lake, doing some hiking up to all of the Native American sites, exploring around the Apache Trail. That's what I would do up here. Now we're headed to Springerville with a population of just under 2,000 people and a median home price of around 240,000. This is on the far eastern side of the state of Arizona, very close to New Mexico. There's also Eager nearby. Out here, you're close to the White Mountains, which is gonna include Mount Baldy and the Sunrise Ski Resort. So lots of entertainment in those woods up there. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this list of the cheapest places to live in Arizona. Let us know what you think in the comments below and check the description to watch some more videos. Or clicking on our best small towns video or best weekend getaways video right here at one of the end screens.